Whew. That was some week. Hi, everybody, particularly those of you that are new to the channel, which is apparently a lot of you. Good to see you here. For those that have not seen anything other than the sort of viral Super Bowl ad response that I did, which didn't even include my face, nice to meet you. I am slightly wondering if it went viral because it didn't include my face. That would not bode well for my self-esteem, but let's hope that that's not what it was. Let's hope that I just made something that was good. Nice to have you here. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have some like fancy video. This will probably not contain the usual level of editing and clips and all of that stuff. I've had a crazy week. I don't have a lot of time to do a lot of editing. But I did want to jump on here and just connect with everybody and kind of give what happened last week from my perspective for those that are interested and sneakily maybe allude to what might be coming up next because I do actually have something in the pipeline. So the week was pretty insane, right? So it started off, I was frustrated with how this channel was going. I had put a lot of work into a few videos that had not really performed very well and I was a bit frustrated and I was quite genuinely praying like, God, I would love an idea, just pray your blessing over the channel, all of that. I went on to Twitter and a friend of mine called Josh Dawes, he had put out a tweet. I had obviously seen what was going on with the He Gets Us Super Bowl ad. The really, what's a nice word for atrocious, like really not good one. And I'd seen it, I was frustrated by it, like a lot of people. And Josh Dawes said, well, why doesn't someone remake it? You know, we're a creative bunch. Popped a little idea into my head. So on a 60 minute break in my actual job, which I promise I have, I made this quick video, put it up on the internet, and then it sort of went a bit nuts. The first person to comment, as far as I saw anyway, was Joel Berry, who's from the Babylon Bee, and then he reposted it. Megan Basham from the Daily Wire was next. My brother texted me that Ted Cruz had retweeted it, and I was like, it's about time he got connected with someone with real power and celebrity status, you know? I don't know who you are. And as a result, a whole bunch of like bigger media outlets started reaching out. So I ended up doing interviews with Jenna Ellis, Charlie Kirk, CBN, and of course, most excitingly of all, the Belfast newsletter, everybody. Come on, Belfast. And if I'm honest, I was sitting there thinking like, I really am not smart enough to be talking to all of these people, but they were foolish enough to invite me on and I wasn't going to turn down that kind of opportunity. So the big question, right? Why did that work? Why did that get out there? Obviously, there's a few elements, luck, timing, a few key people liking it, seeing it, passing it on, that kind of thing. But I think why it resonated with so many people, particularly compared to the original advert, a couple of things on that, right? Firstly, it was, I believe, a better representation of the true gospel. And number two, I think it was a better representation of how Christians, Bible-believing Christians, actually feel towards the world around us. So in the original He Gets Us advert, which many of you will have seen at this point and probably discussed and sent hate mail to whoever made it, which please don't do, that's not kind. It seemed to convey that Jesus approves of the sins of our age. Like that was all these modern woke symbols and it was people washing feet. And then at the end it says, Jesus doesn't preach hate, he washes feet. And of course, Jesus loves and serves everybody. But I think the average person watching it probably would have thought, no, Jesus like, is approving of these things. And anybody who disagrees, well, they are preaching hate. Like that's pretty much the message that came across to everybody that watched it, Christian or non-Christian alike. The true gospel is not that though. The true gospel is that Jesus does not approve of our sins. He loves us in spite of our sins. And so he dies to save us from those sins, not just to support us in them. Big, big difference. And I think that's one reason why this went a bit nuts. The other one is that in my experience, and I have met a lot of Christians, Christians actually really do love people that are in their sin. The average Christian that I know really does love and pray for those who are lost. They pray for those who are disagreed. They want to see them come to saving faith in Jesus. And so what I hopefully conveyed, and I think it came across, was number one, Jesus doesn't actually approve of our sins, but he does save us from them. And number two, that the church wants to see people saved from sin. 
It was, of course, really cool to have something go viral. Here's the what I hope it actually accomplishes, like long term, what would be, because let's be honest, it's one video, guys. It did the rounds. Praise God. Lots of fun. What will it actually achieve? Here's what I hope it achieves. I hope that the Green family, who were the funders of the original advert, who seem from everything I've heard to be devout Christians, to be willing to stand for unpopular causes and who've taken plenty of flack for their faith, I hope that it causes them to reconsider. I hope it causes them to go in a different direction because they seem to be well-intentioned. I don't know about the people around them. I definitely have big questions over that. But I think they were putting up money in order to try and reach people with the gospel. I think they put it in the wrong place. That's what I think they did. And hopefully, best case scenario, this actually shifts them. People have said about doing a crowdfunder, I wouldn't be the guy to try and get an actual advert on air during the Super Bowl. Like that would be a Sorry, pretty major first job in advertising for me. Something I also don't have time to do. But if they can think a little bit better, do you know what? It could make a difference. So what's next? Right, well, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've got a big like, hold on. A big swing for the fences idea, everybody. This is my son's, that's why it's so short. And we don't play baseball here, that's why my swing was so bad. Do not judge me, American audience. I have never played that sport in my life. Anyway, I have a plan that will hopefully direct a bunch of people towards the thousands of gospel preaching, Bible believing, uncompromised churches that are out there. I have about a week to pull that together because I want to get something together for the week leading up to Easter. Will that happen? We'll find out. Will it work? 100% yes. Also, maybe not, but we will try regardless. I am sort of taking a Gimli marching on the gates of Mordor attitude towards this thing. Certainty of death, small chance of success. What are we waiting for? We're gonna try. Anyway, thank you for all of the support. Of course, I'm very encouraged and blessed by all of this and thank you for the very nice comments and thank you for all the new people that have come across the channel since then. I really do appreciate it. It's awesome um, and I'm praising God for it. Can I just say, if you wanna put your money towards something that could help get out great testimonies long-term, because that was really what made this one work was that there were great testimonies involved with it. Check out the guys at Decision Point. I'm going to put a link in below. They have been producing testimony videos that are reaching literally hundreds of thousands of students across the world, particularly in America, but elsewhere as well. I'm not being paid by them. I just like their work. I will hopefully be back next week with something of a harebrained idea that will probably fail. Super. Cheerio. Bye.